Report. One of the biggest things coming up is the reorganization of Portland city government. It will officially change one year from yesterday, but the actual change is expected much sooner. And that is our big story tonight. In case you're new here in November of 2022, Portland voters are so sick of the way the city government worked or more accurately did not work that they approved the idea of getting rid of it altogether. A volunteer group of citizens had created a new plan that voters liked better. And so for the first time in more than 100 years, the city of Portland will soon get a brand new form of government. Still democracy, but a new structure. It's going to be such a big change that we are going to spend many nights over the next year bringing you in-depth information on what's happening and why. And we're going to begin tonight. In early November, I got a chance to talk with the man in charge of ushering in all this change. His name is Mike Jordan. He's currently the chief administrator officer for the city of Portland and has served in several government leadership posts at both the state and local level. What's been the biggest challenge so far? Well, um, I think if you would have come to me a year plus ago and said, we'd like you to restructure city government, I probably would have said, if you give me five years, I can get that done and we can do it really well. So I'm fond these days of saying we're going stupid fast. Uh, and however, um, there are advantages to that too. You know, when you have to make hard decisions about things, sometimes they get put off and we just don't have that choice. So, so we're working our way through the challenging decisions and you probably saw council last week. Uh, we spent seven and a half quality hours together last week and, uh, and there were some hard decisions buried in there and the council struggled with them a bit. But at the end of the day, we now have a framework for city government. Uh, now we can budget into that framework so that we can hand it over to a new mayor and new city council uh, in January 25. He was referring to early November when the existing city council voted to accept his plan for the new city structure. And I thought it was interesting that he said they're moving stupid fast and how that can actually be a great advantage in such a big changing time. I also learned something new in early November. Everyone was reporting that the mayor wanted to take control of city bureaus from the city commissioners who run them now. Turns out not so much. It was not the mayor. It was that guy, Mike Jordan. Why did he want to do that? to start the structural changes early, like July 1st. Exactly, the, the sooner we can begin to transition the way we do business and the way we operate, the more time we'll have to work out those things and find the kinks and, and, and make, and, and to be honest, uh, what doesn't get accounted for very often is that there are 7,000 human beings who live and breathe this city every day and we're changing their world. We're kind of rocking their their whole way of doing things. And, and that takes time for people to make adjustments. And so the change management work that needs to be done, um, that's what we were advocating for. Um, we can do it uh, with the commissioners staying in their, in their traditional role. Um, we'll just have to work to, with them together as a group as we make our decisions and, and move through transitioning. So it's doable uh, and we'll make it work. Well, but I hear you saying it's a lot easier to do on paper than with these human <laughs> beings in person. Well, it, it always is. And, and I'm, I, I also try to remind people that are either critical of the council or critical of some decisions that the staff are making or that, you know, none of us have ever done this before. And um, and so we're kind of making this up as we go along. Now, we did talk to a number of other cities, Austin and Minneapolis and Baltimore and a number of others. We have a relationship with the International City Managers Association in Washington, D.C. and the National League of Cities. So we've been collecting lots of examples and data from other places. But until you have to do it yourself and do it for your community, um, you know, it's a daunting task. And we're all, you know, when we get to these hard decisions and we haven't done it before, it, it's hard for folks. Now, the last time Portland changed its form of government was back in 1913. So, yeah, it really has been a while. And yes, I'm sure it's unsettling for the 7,000 city workers who now may wonder about their future, may worry about it too. I asked Jordan whether layoffs were part of the plan. 
Well, I've been telling folks the transition, the point of the transition is not to reduce staff. Um, however, having said that, um, I think over time, as, as we begin to take a more enterprise view of the whole city, I think we will find inefficiencies. We've, we will find distributions of labor across the whole enterprise that really could stand to be redistributed. And, and in that work, I think we will find efficiencies. I can't name for you which, which positions we won't need in the future, but I think as a, as a future city administrator and the deputies that are gonna be over the service areas, as they work and as, as an executive team and look kind of horizontally across the whole enterprise, I think they will find things that they can make a lot more efficient. It is that um, the same thing as saying you're going to find four or five people doing the exact same job that maybe they'll you only need two for. Well, I, I, I'll give you an example. Um, we currently are 26 offices and bureaus, and uh, we're kind of like the Encyclopedia Britannica. The only thing that links us together is we're alphabetical, you know. Um, and so we we have acted that way as independent bureaus and offices for so long that and and organizations, when they act that way, they tend to try and create everything they need inside themselves. And so we have 26 versions of that. And when we start to look more at an enterprise scale, um, I think we will find that we maybe have too many of one kind of employee, not enough of others. And oh, by the way, even if we think we have the right number, they're distributed badly across the whole enterprise. So, and I think when we think that in those terms, we also will be able to move human resource and be more nimble when we have an emergency in a particular place where we need more human resource for something and focus. On, on some issue. And, and we struggle with that today with the kind of independence of the bureaus and offices. And we report up to five different people right now and have now for decades. And those people are not accountable to each other. They're only accountable to the citizens every four years. And, and so with we we're a place where you might say everybody's in charge and nobody's in charge. And, and so it, we struggle with things that take multiple bureaus to apply themselves. And to be honest, Pat, um, I think it's a little difficult for Portlanders to get their heads around the fact that we are a big city and we have big city problems. And almost all the ones we face are multidimensional and they will take more than one bureau or office or department to solve them. And so we will have to be able to muster multidisciplinary solutions to really complex problems. And, and I think this change is a big step in that direction. That all sounds like a pretty good description of the dysfunction within Portland's city government right now. It will be fascinating to see how all this comes about. Again, Mike Jordan and team have a goal of switching the form of government for Portland beginning July 1st to sort of stress test it and see what's working and what's not before the official legal switchover, which is January 1st of 2025. Now, it's your turn to chime in. What do you think about the city of Portland's new government structure? We've told you already that it's gonna cost a lot more to run each year, around $24 million compared to 11 million now. Some of you think the expanded city council of 12 members is gonna be crazy, have too many cooks in the kitchen. Send us your thoughts, will you? Let us know what you think. The email is thestory at kgw.com or call and leave a, a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090.